Section twenty four of the Ingoldsby Legends, first series. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Ingoldsby Legends, first series, by Richard Harris Barham. Section twenty four. As a pendant to the foregoing, I shall venture to insert Mr. Simpkinson's lucubrations on a subject to him as a savant of the first class scarcely less interesting the aerial voyage to which it alludes took place about a year and a half previously to the august event already recorded and the excitement manifested in the learned antiquary's effusion may give some faint idea of that which prevailed generally among the sons of science at that memorable epoch the monster balloon oh the balloon the great balloon it left vauxhall one monday at noon and every one said we should hear of it soon with news from aleppo or scandaroon but very soon after folks changed their tune the netting had burst the silk the shalloon it had met with a trade wind a deuced monsoon it was blown out to sea it was blown to the moon they ought to have put off their journey till june sure none but a donkey a goose or baboon would go up in november in any balloon then they talked about green oh where's mr green and where's mr holland who hired the machine and where is monk mason the man that has been up so often before twelve times or thirteen and who writes such nice letters describing the scene and where's the cold fowl and the ham and poteen the pressed beef with the fat cut off nothing but lean and the portable soup in the patent tureen have they got to grand cairo or reached aberdeen or jerusalem hamburg or bally porine no they have not been seen oh they haven't been seen stay here's mr guy mr frederick guy at paris says he i've been up very high a couple of hundred of toises or nigh a cock stride the tuileries pantiles to spy with dolan's best telescope stuck at my eye and my umbrella under my arm like paul pry but i could see nothing at all but the sky so i thought with myself twas of no use to try any longer and feeling remarkably dry from sitting all day stuck up there like a guy i came down again and you see here am i but here's mr hughes what says young mr hughes why i'm sorry to say we've not got any news since the letter they threw down in one of their shoes which gave the mare's nose such a deuce of a bruise as he popped up his eyeglass to look at their cruise over dover and which the folks flocked to peruse at squire's bazaar the same evening in cruise politicians newsmongers town council and blues turks heretics infidels jumpers and jews scorning bachelors papers and warren's reviews but the wind was then blowing towards helvet sloughs and my father and i are in terrible stews for so large a balloon is a sad thing to lose here's news come at last here's news come at last a vessel's come in which has sailed very fast and a gentleman serving before the mast mr noakes has declared that the party has passed safe across to the hague where their grapnel they cast as a fat burgomaster was staring aghast to see such a monster come borne on the blast and it caught in his waistband and there it stuck fast oh fie mr noakes for shame mr noakes to be poking your fun at us plain dealing folks sir this isn't a time to be cracking your jokes and such jesting your malice but scurvily cloaks such a trumpery tale every one of us smokes and we know very well your whole story's a hoax oh what shall we do oh where will it end can nobody go can nobody send to calais or bergen op zoom or ostend can't you go there yourself can't you write to a friend for news upon which we may safely depend huzza huzza one and eightpence to pay for a letter from hamborough just come to say 
they descended at weilburg about break of day and they've lent them the palace there during their stay and the town is becoming uncommonly gay and they're feasting the party and soaking their clay with johannesburg rudsheim moselle and tokay and the landgraves and margraves and counts beg and pray that they won't think as yet about going away notwithstanding they don't mean to make much delay but pack up the balloon in a wagon or dray and pop themselves into a german poche and get on to paris by lille or tournay where they'll boldly declare any wager they'll lay if the gas people there do not ask them to pay such a sum as must force them at once to say nay they'll inflate the balloon in the champs elysees and be back again here the beginning of may dear me what a treat for a juvenile feat what thousands will flock their arrival to greet there'll be hardly a soul to be seen in the street for at vauxhall the whole population will meet and you'll scarcely get standing room much less a seat for this all preceding attraction must beat since they'll unfold what we want to be told how they coughed how they sneezed how they shivered with cold how they tippled the cordial as racy and old as hodges or deedy or smith ever sold and how they all then felt remarkably bold how they thought the boiled beef worth its own weight in gold and how mr green was beginning to scold because mr mason would try to lay hold of the moon and had very near overboard rolled and there they'll be seen they'll be all to be seen the great coats the coffee-pot mugs and tureen with the tight-rope and fireworks and dancing between if the weather should only prove fair and serene and there on a beautiful transparent screen in the middle you'll see a large picture of green mr holland on one side who hired the machine mr mason on t'other describing the scene and fame on one leg in the air like a queen with three wreaths and a trumpet will over them lean while envy in serpents and black bombazine looks on from below with an air of chagrin then they'll play up a tune in the royal saloon and the people will dance by the light of the moon and keep up the ball till the next day at noon and the peer and the peasant the lord and the loon the haughty grandee and the low picaroon the six-foot lifeguardsman and little gossoon will all join in three cheers for the monster balloon End of section twenty four